Hello everyone. This video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 9.3.2.10, Configuring Extended ACLs Scenario 1. There are two scenarios in the uh, Cisco Networking Academy, and again, this is a part of the Routing and Switching Essentials uh, Cisco Networking Academy curriculum. Now, before you get to this assignment, hopefully you've had a chance to do the standard ACL assignments in this chapter. Remember, standard ACLs, when they're numbered 1 through 99, that lets Cisco IOS know you're about to do a standard ACL. You can also do named ones, uh, but remember, there's only one criteria that you can filter traffic for based off of the standard ACL, and that is where the packet is coming from, the source information, whether it be one PC or uh, one actual IP address or a network of IP addresses. It's got to be the source. And with standard, you want to place the ACL as close to uh, the destination as possible so that you don't accidentally prevent or allow traffic that you're not meaning to because it only accepts that one criteria. Now in this lab, we're going to focus on extended. You will notice they have you question mark your way through the command because extended has a lot of parameters, some optional, that you can set. So we're going to look at that as we kind of piece this together. With extended, we're going to be doing this on R1. We're going to get this on the screen. We're going to start out on R1, go into configuration mode. The command, and we'll widen this out because our command is going to be pretty long. Okay, we're going to start out the same with access list. If you do a question mark, as the directions tell you, the first thing you're going to notice is the number. Remember, 1 through 99 is standard. We're going to do 100. That's going to let our Cisco IOS operating system know that we're going to have a lot more parameters that we can set. We are going to permit some traffic, okay, in this particular assignment. This is step C. We're going to permit some traffic. And if we do a question mark again, this is a new option. We didn't have this with standard. So these are all protocols, types of traffic that it can filter. IP means any, all of these protocols, just any of them. We are going to filter it down to TCP traffic, okay? So it's going to be a specific type of traffic, okay? UDP would not fall into this or any of the other ones, right? Just TCP traffic. Uh, if we do another question mark, we get the source information. We're familiar with this. Uh, you know, where is our traffic coming from? In this particular example, it is coming from 172.22.34.64. And don't type this part yet, but our subnet mask is 255.255.255.224. Now, if you would have done a question mark there, you would have saw it once the wild card. So the way to get the wild card, if you can figure out the subnet mask, which is a slash 27 here, Put 255 above every one of those subnet mass numbers in the sections and then subtract. So you end up with 255 minus 255 is 0. 255 minus 255 is 0. Same thing for the next one. But then 255 minus 224 was 31. And voila, you have your wildcard mask. The next part, if you do a question mark, this is new, the destination information. So we could put the word any here. That'd be any destination just like we could have did any for the source all right but here we're going to do a actual host one device on our network and we're going to do 172.22.34.62 so that is an actual device on our network and if you look that device is the server in your address and table 172.22.34.62 that is the actual server's IP address okay so we're permitting traffic to there that's the destination from any device on the 172.22.34.64 whole network okay now the next part if we do another question mark is new as well these are kind of like uh, conditional operators in math where you have like greater than, less than, equal to, not equal to. Um, here, we're going to do uh, all this regarding a port number. So we're going to do equal to, okay, and if we do a question mark, FTP. There are keywords here that you can put for specific ports, or you could put any port in the whole range of 65,535 ports, or 36 if you include zero, um, ports that we've got there. So we could do the word FTP, or you could do 21. For grading purposes, they want you to do FTP here. So we're going to permit TCP traffic, which FTP protocol uses, 
from 172.22.34.64, that whole network, which ranges from what, dot .64 to like uh, dot 95, 94? 95, yeah, 95, sorry. From dot .64 to dot .95, any of that traffic, that's where it's originating from going to the server, as long as it's FTP traffic. So we hit enter after that, okay? That permits traffic. Now there's a, the one other, because remember once we did that, that deny any any automatically came at, at the bottom. We can't take that out. So there is uh, one other type of traffic that we want to allow or permit um, in step J. It says create a second access list um, statement to permit ICMP traffic, basically pinging to make sure we can test out whether we have connectivity to a device. So it's going to go in access list 100 as well, right below this rule. Okay. This time, though, remember we could set ICMP traffic here. So ICMP, okay, uh, from that same destination network, okay, so this, the wildcard is going to be the same, going to that same PC. So this covers traffic that, or sorry, to that server, sorry, not a PC, to the server. Uh, it covers all the communication between or pinging from that network to the server, okay. And that's it. So we don't have to set it equal to port or anything like that because it's just a ping. Now, those two statements are the only two statements there. So any packet sent from that network when it reaches R1, it's going to say, "Do or did you come from this network? Are you going to that server? And is it FTP traffic? If it doesn't fit that criteria, it's going to go to the next statement. Are you coming from that network, going to that server, and using ICMP or pinging? If it isn't, it's going to that third statement, and that third statement we did not write, but it's automatically implied or, you know, at the bottom, access list 100, deny any, any, okay? So uh, everything else will be denied but those two types of traffic. The last thing we need to do is go apply it. Now remember, standard ACLs you want to apply and place it on the interface as close to the destination as possible. From going from down here up here to the server. So I actually want to... Uh, place it as close to the source as possible when you're dealing with the extended. So I'm going to place it on G00 and your instructions remind you to do that. Okay. Now, when we're thinking about the flow, that's where we do the in and the out. So it's coming from down here or originating the source going up to this direction. That means it's coming into G00 because it's not exiting out of R1 yet. Okay. It's coming into it. So we're going to do IP access group 100 in. Okay. So it's coming into the router from that direction. Now your directions have you ping from PC1 to the server. So let's try that out, see if it works. I'm going to zoom out here. So we can use the lazy way, the envelope. PC1 to the server. I'm going to expand this out. See, it says fail the first time, but if you refire that, it says successful. Usually, you know, the pings, uh, if you would have did a command line as well, you know, first couple may fail, but try it again. If it's, you know, four or five times and it's still not working, you may have a problem. But it is working, so it is actually allowing us to ping because that's what we did. That's the ICMP traffic. But let's also test. So if we click on PC1, desktop, command prompt. Let's test to see if it'll actually let us FTP to it. So FTP, our actual address, okay, and voila, it comes up. It says trying to connect, connected, welcome, right? So then we just type quit, but uh, that actually lets you know that it asks you for your username, so it is connected, welcome to the packet tracer FTP server, so everything is working good. All other traffic is denied though, okay? Now, types of traffic. So, like, if you would have went to the PC and tried to, um, you know, let's try pinging PC1 to PC2, okay? No matter how many times I refire that, that's failed because it's coming from that network, but it's not going to the server. It's reading it as going to PC2's network. So, R1 is denying that completely. That falls in it, deny any, any. Okay, so that takes care of our first access list there, and we are at 50 out of 100. So we've got a couple more access lists to do extended, and we're going to do some named extended uh, ACLs on R1. So I'm going to zoom back in here for a second. Okay, so if we pick up in part two. It says configure, apply, and verify an extended named ACL. 
Okay, with named, you don't just start with the access list command, you actually start with IP access list. And you're kind of going to build a list here a little bit differently. So you do that, you hit the question mark. You can do a standard one, but we're going to do extended. Again, it lets the iOS know that what were uh, the parameters to accept from us. And we're going to name it HTTP only. So it's going to be for HTTP traffic. That's what it's going to allow. Okay. So now you notice we got this different prompt here. We're under the extended named ACL. So we can just build our list starting with permit, deny, or remark. So permit, we want to do TCP traffic. Do you remember IP covers all of them, UDP or TCP, whatever you're doing there. So TCP traffic, this is the uh, source, 172.22.34.96. And this network has a... This is the 196, or sorry, the uh, 96 network, which is connected to PC2. So this is down here, this part right here. Okay. So it's those devices. Uh, it's covering that whole network, and it's a slash 28. Now, slash 28 is a dot 240. Uh, okay. So the, the regular subnet mask will look like that. But remember, inverse it, just put two five fives above all of it and subtract. So we'll do the wild card is 0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.15. Okay. That is the source. We are still doing host, all right, to the server up there. Okay. So this is traffic coming from PC2 going to the server. Or really just not PC2, but the whole network. So if you added another computer besides PC2 on that network, it would still be good to go. Um, but it's got to be going to the server. And we do the equal to again. And you notice here www is one of the options. You could also put the word HTTP or 80 there. And Cisco iOS would still know what you're talking about. But they just have you use the keyword www. Okay, so that's our first statement. So it's going to build that list again, checking it line by line. Now we're also going to allow pinging from PC2. That's always a good thing to allow to make sure and diagnose uh, problems with the network. So same source information, same wildcard mask is the same source, same destination. So going from that network that's attached to PC2, um, that whole network allowing it to go to the server. Okay, and that is it for our access. Now remember, even with named ones, there's still that deny any any at the bottom. So this is the only two types of traffic it's going to allow coming from there. Now we have to go apply it. Remember, we want to apply as close to the source as possible. This is the source of where it's coming from. So I'm going to apply it to G01, and it is going in to the interface. So interface G01, IP access group. We are going to name it or recall our reference, our name instead of the number, and in. Okay. Now, let's see about our application here, about is it really working. So we've got uh, ping traffic from PC2 to server being allowed. You see it says successful, so that's awesome. If it failed the first time, refire it a couple times, it should say successful. We allowed that kind of traffic. Uh, we want to make sure that we can do the web browser traffic, because that's what we did, www traffic, HTTP. Okay, that doesn't even cover HTTPS. So if you try to secure one, that would also fail. But if we go to the web browser and let's type in the IP address of the actual server up there, which is, um, sorry, is 34.62. Voila, you see it says welcome. Okay, everything worked correctly there. So it's allowing our HTTP traffic. You notice the protocol listed here. Again, with like checking email and stuff, it often changes the HTTPS. You wouldn't be able to do that here based off this uh, um, ACL unless you put one in there to permit that specifically. Now, also, last time, remember, we could FTP from PC1 to server, right? We can't do that here. So I'm going to prove that uh, if you did FTP uh, 172.22.34.62, 
we hit enter, it says trying to connect, it is never going to connect, okay? It's gonna fail because we did not allow FTP traffic. You see error timed out, okay? So everything's working as it should and we got 100 out of 100 on our packet tracer assignment. Okay, so you can kind of see the extended ACLs offer a lot more flexibility and what you can allow and, uh, you know, or the parameters for source, destination, port ranges, less than, greater than, equal to, all that stuff. It's a lot longer command, a little more complicated, but still the same parameters apply or the same uh, nuances for the command syntax, just slightly different. Okay, so hopefully that helped. That covers Packet Tracer Assignment 9.3.2.10, Configure an Extended ACL Scenario 1.